and welcome to Mount Kelly Prep Radio's 20 Questions with me, Toby Berryman. Today our guest is Dr Andrew Wines. Firstly, who is your favourite president and why? I think probably uh, President Clinton is my favourite president and that would be down to his resilience. I think the challenges he faced from Congress and other quarters during his presidency were quite remarkable. His ability to remain positive and to retain the trust of the people and, and to to fulfill his responsibility to do the very best for the people uh, makes him my favourite, I think. Who do you think may become president at the next election or in the near future? I think, you know, we're in uncharted territories and all bets are off. And I really don't know how things will go. I mean, I think, you know, the impossible has become the possible. So the next president may yet again be President Trump. I think Mike Pence is quite an ambitious man, and if traditional conservatives feel that they need to retain the reins of power, that Pence might be able to win election, sort of on the Trump label, I think that uh, Mrs. Obama might be the type of person popular enough to uh, galvanize and unite the anti-Trump forces. I wouldn't be surprised if she, perhaps in the near future, had a run for the presidency. As I'm sure you know, President Obama has been a very cool president and has gone down very well with the younger generation of voters. Do you think Trump will be able to keep this up and keep the younger generation of voters on his side? I mean, I think he, he's played an interesting game. He's probably been the last person who's able to do this. But I think he has voted on older voters, middle-aged and beyond, and done his best uh, to capture as many of those voters from a certain political shade as he can. I think those young people who are frustrated and angry and almost like his outrageousness might be brought along. My biggest worry is that a younger generation will protest, perhaps, but not necessarily involve themselves in politics and could make themselves um, uh, not really part of the system at all. So I think there's a danger there. There are no standout young Democrats. Where do you think the next Democrat candidate will come from? It's a good question, um, to which I almost have no answer whatsoever. I think the Democratic Party is in, in trouble. That in the, in the primaries, the Republicans suffered from having too many candidates, and the Democrats were struggling. There is a former Virginia Senator, uh, Jim Webb, who ran a very poor campaign for the Democratic nomination, but he has a, an ability to appeal to the populist elements that President Trump has. He has a distinguished military record. He was Secretary of the Navy and the Reagan administration. I think if he had better uh, political tactics and advisors, he might possibly be a candidate. Who do you think was never a president, but would have made a good one, and why? I think General Wesley Clark would have made uh, a good president. I think that what he achieved with NATO, what he achieved in Bosnia, and I think there's a fairly good run of, of some generals being good presidents like General Eisenhower. I think that when uh, Wesley Clark was running for the Democratic nomination against Senator John Kerry, that he would have made a better candidate. Um, and I think it's a shame that, that that didn't come to fruition. What are your views on celebrities and personalities like Kanye West and Mark Zuckerberg considering presidential runs? And do you think they will have a chance? Um, I don't in a sense. I mean, I think what's beginning to shape elections are culture wars. And I think that people with celebrity and with a high public profile run a huge risk uh, if they're not as unconventional as Mr. Trump. Uh, Mr. Trump's kind of been like Millwall. Nobody loves me and we don't care. And uh, that's come across well. But I fear for Kanye West, uh, things from his past will be dragged out. that will alienate certain sections of the electorate. With Mark Zuckerberg, the fear is that I'm getting I'm an old man, so I hope I'm getting this right. But Facebook, am I right? This is what yes. I'm thinking. I just think the problem is he can be associated with all the abuses of Facebook, and I think he is vulnerable in that sense, so I don't really see that happening again. Do you think Trump will serve a full term, or will he get bored or impeached? Um, I think two out of the three will happen. I think he will serve a full term, and I think he's already bored. Um, but 
our only real gauge to who he is, I'm, I'm ashamed to say, is the Celebrity Apprentice. And if you watch that religiously, you'll find that the one candidate he will always criticize the most is somebody who quits. He, he, he hates quitters. He, he uh, criticized Senator McCain for being captured in Vietnam. That made him a loser. So I don't think he'll quit. I don't think he'll get impeached because I think this is why he's having this attack on the media and, and suggesting there's even more bias in the media than maybe there is because he's now going to be able to paint any impeachment as a politically motivated partisan attack on him by the liberal media or the liberal sections of, of Congress and I think he's probably insulated himself from that danger. Will President Trump be the strongest test yet of the checks and balances inherent in the U.S. system? Yes, he will, because he has said, I'm not going to play by the rules. And, and I fear in some cases he doesn't even uh, know where the rule book has been chucked. Um, I think there are two reasons why he will be the greatest strain. One, I think he has no sense of restraint uh, internally whatsoever. And sadly, I think in an era of reality television and after this long campaign, that the public sense of outrage has been worn down. And I fear that whereas in the past, people would have been shocked and protested that people are going to begin to accept this behavior as the norm. And so I think he can begin to run roughshod over those checks and balances. Do you have any good books which you would recommend for anyone interested in the history of the American presidency? I would, I mean, there's, there's a David Shai, uh, S-H-I, his History of America, which is a, a general university textbook, a sort of broad history of America, but I think the profiles of the different presidencies and the themes that come out over time are really good. But the book I always recommend for anybody interested in the presidency and policies, uh, Robert in politics, is Robert Penn Warren's novel, All the King's Men. And I think, you know, the ideas of corruption, idealism, uh, the methods by which politics is gained and the degree to which hopes are shattered, I think it's the best depiction of, of U.S. politics anybody could read. Do you believe the U.S. can be governed by tweet? Trump tweeted last night in capital letters, see you in court, the security of our nation is at stake. Should he be allowed to be this rude online as a president? I mean, personally, I don't think he, he should be, and I think there's a great danger in him not understanding how these messages are interpreted elsewhere. I think also it, it's difficult for other countries looking at the United States, they've got to wonder what is the genuine uh, party line. Is it what the State Department says? Is it what the Foreign Secretary, well, the equivalent the Secretary of State says? Is it what Mr. Trump has tweeted? Um, I think it's, it, it's a great danger, and yet on the other hand, it has been shown that if you're not using these new forms of media, you're not connecting with lots of people. I just think he is probably using those as irresponsibly as possible, but very successfully politically. I'd have to grant him that. Could the UK and Theresa May act as a calming influence and a bridge to Europe, or is that wishful thinking? I think Theresa May might possibly have been a bridge to Europe, and I think that could have been a negotiation of you need this, we need that, we've worked together a long time. I fear that her association now with President Trump will very much damage that, in that uh, the greater distance you get from some place geographically, the less subtly uh, you're able to observe that faraway place. And I fear for many Europeans, Theresa May has become the other side of the coin of President Trump. And I think what she may think she's gained with the United States will have become at the cost of what she might have gained uh, with the European Union. What deal do you think the UK might get with the US? A very bad one, and I, I'm just amazed that people, I mean, did you not get the memo? It will be America first, hire American, buy American. Um, you know, if you look through all of Mr Trump's business history, there's one thing for certain, Money's always been lost, but he's never lost it. And his partners always have. People haven't been paid. And, you know, I think there will be gratitude from him that, that the UK has reached out the hand of friendship and almost offered him some degree of legitimacy. But you don't know the extent to which he'll actually focus on Miss May's hand of friendship or the rejection he's received this week from the Speaker of the, of the House, or the Speaker of the House of Commons. Um, I just can't see how this is going to be a big deal, a good deal for Britain, if what he's trying to do is single-handedly promote the interests of the American worker. 
Who do you think was the most underrated president? I think President Carter was probably the most underrated, and I think he's been lampooned, he's been criticised, he's been caricatured as a, as a sort of cartoon liberal. And I have to say, the, the integrity and the dignity with which he went about the office, but in terms of a long-term achievement, the peace accords between Israel and Egypt were unimaginable, seemingly impossible before he achieved that. And they are the one continuing anchoring cornerstone of some degree of stability in the Middle East. And I think only he could have achieved that, and I think he deserves enormous credit for it. Should judges be political appointments? I think they should. And I know this all goes wrong, but, but the problem with politics and the problem with the system at the moment is that people feel that those people making decisions and representing them are unconnected from the population. And the one thing about having elected judges is that they need to be in touch, uh, or political appointments, even in some judges, by the way, in the states are elected, that they have to be in touch with the mood of the nation at the moment. And politically appointed judges are the best because once they're appointed, they can't be easily deselected. And you suddenly find out that many of them act more uh, neutrally, uh, more impartially, more responsibly than you might have imagined when they were first appointed. So I'm, I'm not against politically appointed judges. Who do you believe was the worst US president ever and why? It's a great shame, but I think that President Grant, uh, who was president after the Civil War, I think he's one of the most remarkable uh, Americans, you know, the, the victory of the, of the North over the South in the Civil War was down to his leadership and President Lincoln's leadership in an amazing partnership. I can see why people thought this is going to be a fine president, but it just wasn't the job for him. And I think that it was, uh, you know, corruption run rife, uh, terrible scandals and, and just a, a bit of a train wreck. Is Trump a one-off, or are we likely to see more presidents who have no political experience, like billionaire businessmen? Maybe in the short term, and I, you know, I, I wouldn't dismiss the possibility that President Trump will be the second time running a re-elected celebrity president. Um, I think at the moment, in the short term, that the public mood against elitism, experience, uh, long-term careers in politics is so great that it's hard for somebody else to break in, but the US political system, as President Trump is learning quickly, is an incredibly complicated uh, mechanism to manipulate, and I think people are going to begin to realize that somebody needs to have some experience of the car uh, before they start driving it. What do you think President Obama will do in retirement? Well, uh, I think he will probably, perhaps, go into academia. I think he'll probably publish some books. I think he previously had been a, a sort of community organizer helping people at very local levels, the grassroots levels, improve their lives and I suspect he will be involved uh, in that in some way. Has Trump distanced himself far enough from his and his family's business interests? Should he have tweeted about Nordstrom stopping selling Ivanka's clothes? Was that an abuse of his position? I mean, I think everything he does, and, and I don't even mean this pejoratively, is an abuse of his position. And I think um, he's out to abuse his position. And there's a great problem that, that the US presidency involves a person, but it also involves an office. And President Trump is only interested in the personal and forgetting that he is uh, representing an institution or an office. Um, I do think it's wrong to have done that. I, I don't see how he's going to divest himself from his business interests, but I have to say that's probably the least of my worries uh, about him. How important is Vice President Pence? Do you think he will have any influence? I think he'll have huge influence. He's there to reassure um, social conservatives. He's there to reassure traditional fiscal conservatives, those elements of the Republican Party. I think he's an incredibly clever and capable man. Um, and again, you know, if we were trying to pick these future presidents, I, I would suggest he probably has a strong chance of doing that. I mean, were President Trump to step down, uh, I think it would be an interesting ride uh, for America. But I think, you know, many of these far-right things might be implemented even more effectively uh, were 
uh, it could be a President Pence. So I think he does have influence, and I think he might have even more uh, influence. Finally, do you think Obama, like many other presidents, will set up a foundation, and what areas do you think it's likely to cover? I think it's likely to cover um, community concerns, that uh, issues of poverty, education, uh, prejudice, in, in the context of perhaps um, urban environments, uh, local districts within cities, uh, perhaps in rural areas. And I think, you know, he's going to step back from the overarching big picture and see what can be achieved uh, at the grassroots. And I think he'll probably set up a foundation that promotes or encourages that for long-term improvement and long-term change. Thank you for joining me on 20 Questions. Thank you.